I am a feminist and my feminism started with a fish fry. So once upon a time, my family is seated around the dining table, my grandma, dad and my brother and myself. My mom is serving food and never in her entire life has it occurred to her that she can actually sit down along with us and we can all serve our own food. But then that story is for another day. Today, she's got three fish fries. And she makes sure that the oldest at the table and the two men at the table get one each. A 12-year-old me sits and weeps. I am deeply hurt and I demand to know why I am not considered deserving of a fish fry. My family is shocked, but my mom, she's flabbergasted. As in, she cannot fathom why I'm overreacting, because she probably never got any fish fries in her entire life. But then, that's how my journey of questions begin. In school, I stand for the student elections. So what happens is this whole school is divided into four different houses. And each house gets two captains. The boy who wins the highest number of votes becomes the captain. And the girl who, become, uh, who gets the highest number of votes becomes the vice captain by default. Like they thought husband, wife, so captain, vice captain is like perfect. Uh, but uh, a few of us don't think it's perfect. We question and the system is changed. So from there on, every house gets two captains, one girl captain and one boy captain. So by that, this time in my life, uh, uh, I'm like, you know, this is pretty cool and this is how life is gonna be. You just ask and you get everything done around you. But then <laughs> I move on and start working in the real world out there. I start working in an, in, in an industry which bans you if you ask questions. Yeah, like they actually ban people. So uh, what happened was um, I was working in a few movies and at the same time I was hosting a television show. And the, uh, the theater owners union comes along and tells me that I can't do that. And I'm like, what? Why not? And they ban me. No conversation, no discussion, they just ban me. I got to know ob about it on the evening news, no kidding. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, I persisted. I questioned the ban, then I flew out the ban, and I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> thank you. But when I look back, I see a line of women who didn't ask these questions in all these situations. My mom, who never really got any fish fries. My teachers, who never really got a similar platform because of their gender. Uh, my yesteryear colleagues, for whom I think the unfairness had just beget, become a way of life. And no, I'm not here to blame any of them. When I walked into this film industry, I was greeted with words like um, shelf life, adjust, compromise, smile more, but most often to dumb down. Like, you know, they would ask you to dumb down. And I'm like, yeah, that comes very easily to us women. All the girls here, you remember when we were in the our TJ, teenage years, uh, we used to dumb down so that the boys would find us all curl and perfect marriage material types. Yeah. So, you know, I think we girls are just very good at putting up an act because uh, we are always told to be someone else, not us, someone that society wants us to be, not us for sure. So, and I, and I think that's why we have about 150 actresses coming into the industry every other year to act opposite like 10 male actors who rule the industry. Yeah, they could only find about 10 men who could really act uh, against the 150 girls. Don't worry, boys, it's just our experience working in our favor, really. And, <laughs> but then the question remains, how long do you dumb down? How long 
do you stay silent? And what does it take to break your silence? In February 2017, my friend and colleague was physically assaulted and sexually abused on a moving car. In spite of knowing all the consequences of going ahead and pressing charges, she stood up for herself and demanded for the justice that, the, that she deserved. I think she broke every single convention and stereotype that was associated with a woman in her situation. And that is what it took to break my silence. And that opened a Pandora's box of questions, and we are seeking answers. Okay, so now let me give you a small glimpse into this Pandora's box. In the wake of this incident, the president of the All Malayali Movie Artists Association remarked that harassment, and sexual harassment in particular, was a thing of the past. Social media abuse on women is alarming right now. But if any of you women want to feel any better, please visit the comment section of an actress's FB profile. Like, you know, we kind of have our whole life figured out because they'll tell us what to wear, what to do, what to, how to act, how to behave as a woman, as a daughter-in-law, as a wife. Like, life lessons you want come to our comment section. And you'll also get to know all the different sexual positions that they would like to rape us in. It is 2017, and female actors get paid one-third of their male counterparts. We are told we have absolutely no value when it comes to satellite rights, that is when they sell a movie to television houses, and also we don't play any part in box office collections. So I'm thinking they might as well buy a few extra furnitures for the set design, or maybe they actually do think of us as furnitures already, you know, so I don't know about that. So um, the male to female ratio on any random set is one is to 30. And we all know Kerala as a state has the healthiest sex ratio in the country today. The Vishaka guidelines, which, had, which has been laid out by the Supreme Court of India, and which has been passed into a law recently, is not followed in such a big movie industry, in spite of us paying about 40% entertainment tax to the government. We have had production controllers barging into our rooms of actresses and physically assaulting them and being let scot-free with a customary suspension of like a two months. Yeah. A male actor, um, in between, say, um, 20 to 70 years, like married, unmarried, twice married, with kids, without kids, with grandkids, without grandkids, does not matter, irrespective. Male actors are given a platform to explore their craft, to, to excel in roles that are exclusively written for them, to grow, to evolve, to see their career take off when they are at their prime. And that is the way it should be. And I'm so happy for them as an artist, but not so happy for the actresses for whom every decision that she takes in her personal life affects her career, you know, getting a, getting a marriage, getting a divorce, getting a baby, if at all her career gets still there. Everything that she does affects her career. We all have at least one woman in our life who has completely influenced our being, our existence. Why is it that it is not reflected in the most popular art form of this century? Why is the stories of our women as citizens, as leaders, as villains, as dancers, as mothers, daughters, anything, but why is it not entertaining enough? Why is it not interesting or heroic enough? And now that we are in, at this topic of female representation in cinema, the highest grossing Malayalam movie in history had four women in it. One, a nagging wife. Two, a sex iron who came on screen just to swoon at the hero. Three, a mother-in-law who is spewing expletives. 
for another wife who is pushing out baby after baby. And why should all of this bother you? I think we need to look at this industry as a microcosm of the larger world that we are living in. And the question still remains, is life imitating art or is art imitating life? And either ways, we have a problem. There is something called as the washing bata in the Malayalam film industry. So while you're working in a movie, your clothes, your soil clothes are picked up from your room, washed, ironed, and dropped back to your room. You're given the best of food on sets, like, you know, two delicacies for every other meal, beef included. <laughs> Kerala. <laughs> um, the production takes care of every small detail of your day-to-day -day life when you are working on their movie. This they do to ensure that true art is made in every possible way. And also, you know, this career, this profession gives you so much of love and support from everybody around you. You know, it's priceless. I, I tell, I'm telling you, it's priceless. When I go to functions and I, when I receive the kind of love I receive, it's priceless. And I kind of know the privileged platform that I have. And I think it is not possible to stand in the middle of that kind of privilege and not stand up and do what you can do for a world that is inspiring us to do our art. It is not possible to turn a blind eye to the unabashed sexism, ageism, and casteism that exists in our society and is reflected in our cinema content and in the very fiber of our industry. You cannot not be disturbed by the fact that an artist community is not trying to change that narrative. You cannot not be disturbed by the fact that an audience community of the most literate, open-minded, and progressive state in the country today is not vehemently asking for that change in narrative. For the first time in this country, 20 women from different walks of cinema come together and ask these uncomfortable questions on behalf of everybody who wants to ask these questions and form the Women in Cinema Collective. We are at a very important crossroad in our lives. I think we at least live in times where we can actually ask for the fish fries we think we deserve. We need to seize this moment and sow the seeds of change. And like a true blue film lover, I want to borrow Shivaji Ganeshan's dialogues from Tevar Magan to kind of put things in perspective. We saw the seeds today, and they will reap the fruits tomorrow. And then it will be their daughters, and then their daughters. We might not be around to see it, but we'll be the ones who sowed the seeds for them. <laughs> this is a call of duty for us, and our questions are our seeds of change. Let us all come together and promise to ask all the questions that our past generation could not ask so that our future generation will not have to ask them. Thank you.